he will do it as an individual simply because we have individual defects in our characters. None of us really have the same matching issues. And so God has to tailor our fire at different degrees on the thermometer based on the issues he wants to burn out. And so it will be individualized. But nonetheless, it is through the fire of tribulation that God will get the pure gold. Sometimes I I have a thing with time. I like to go back. I, I keep, matter of fact, I have several calendars with me of different year. I'll go back and they're all marked up. It's just my little personal thing. Sometimes I reflect and I say, what was I doing on the 20th of August 2021? And I will remember what I was doing and that will show me how life has changed in one year. These are just the things that I do, my little habits. But time continues to flow. And as time is flowing, we are going, and the second coming of Christ is coming to meet us head on. I want to ask you a question this morning. Are you ready? Are you ready to meet the second coming of the Lord? Is your life in order? Is your character clear? Church, this morning I want to remind us that self is so deadly, so dangerous, that it will cover some little things. But God sees everything. God knows everything. And so it behoves upon us to take quiet time. Amen? Sit down many times and reminisce and reflect. Today is the 28th of August, 2022. We are drawing closer to another baptism on the 10th of September. And we are drawing closer to another communion on the 17th of September. I want to remind us of our prayer and fasting this month, the 31st of August. This will be a Wednesday. I want to also remind us to search our souls, individual souls, because these things can become a form of godliness if we don't make sure that we are connected to God. Good morning. Are you happy to be in the house of the Lord this morning? Amen. You want to get into the Word? Hope the children are where they ought to be and your phones are off, off, off. It is Sabbath. We are going to pray before I open the Holy Word. Let us get into the attitude of prayer. Continue to sing. 
may we continue to worship you in spirit and in truth. Now, as I am about to open holy words, I ask, O oh God, that thou may cover me with your robe as I handle the words of holy writ. What do you want to say to your people this morning? Say it, Lord. Through me, Father, for I am willing and your able. Cover this place, prevent any distraction. May we worship you in spirit and in truth. Work now, O oh God, for your glory we pray in Jesus' name. All right. Can we go to the screen? Let us, let us start first text, Matthew chapter 24, and we start at verse 42, a very familiar passage that we revisit this morning, very applicable to now, now. Verse 42 of Matthew 24 says, what should they afford? For ye know not what hour your Lord doth come. We still don't know. And we will only know one period only. When will that be? Right after the pouring of the seven last day, God will speak his covenant of peace to those who are seen. This is in great controversy. But we don't know even now. Verse 43 says, But know this, know this, that if the good man of the house had known in what watch the thief would come, he would have watched and would not have suffered his house to be broken up. I want you to understand that even though the text uses the term the good man, for he is not a thief, mm -hmm. for the thief come to kill, steal, and to destroy. Alright? So he who owns the house is the good man, but he fails, for he is not watching. In the spiritual sense now, God's people will not be taken as one who is taken by a thief. For they are constantly watching. Verse 44 says, same Matthew 24, Therefore, be Some say they're this type of truth, 
Lots of things, they go back building, come up. All sorts of things are happening this morning. But don't be distracted. There's only two groups. No matter, matter how much people in whichever country, there's only two groups. Wise, unwise. Light, darkness. Sin, righteousness. Truth, error. God, the devil. Heaven, hell. Only two. Don't get, don't get caught up in all that. Only two. So, it says, who then is a faithful, faithful and wise servant? Watch this now. Who his Lord had made ruler over his household Hope you understand that we're not talking just in the spiritual sense about the house where you're going back home today. For God's house shall be called a house of prayer. The church is the household. Who? Whom his Lord hath made ruler over his household. I like what come next to give them meat. And end with a question sign because that's how the Bible asks his question. It's like even a statement. Long question. But look at the first part. Who then is a faithful and wise servant? You see the question? That's the question. Who? Whom is Lord and made ruler over his household to give them meat in due season? You know what's another word you could put there? Very simple. Present truth. You know what the word present truth means? It's the truth that every generation needs for their time at that time. In other words, there was a truth that was necessary at the time in the year 2000. But this is now 22 years after the year 2000. And if what you were just preaching in 2000 you are still just preaching in 2022 after all the events that have taken place. You are not giving meat in due season. And then my question is, are you a faithful and wise servant? And if you're not wise, you are unwise, foolish. Verse 46, blessed. Is that servant Doing what? Doing what? Doing what? Verse 45. Remember verse 45 above? Doing what? When his Lord comes, shall find him doing what? Giving meat. In when? This is the Bible speaking, not me. It says verse 47 now. He 
his fellow servants and to eat and drink the drunken. Who is the drunken? You think it's a man with that red and nephew? No. Shock? Huh? Who is the drunken? Come now, spiritual now. Who is the drunken? The gender. Those in the world. Those who have drunken out of the cup that the woman holds. Who is that woman? Revelation 17. What is she writing? The beast. She has given them to drink out of the cup. But this servant now is doing what? Eating. <laughs> what is he eating? And drinking. With the drunken. With the drunken. Who is that? The Lord of that servant shall come in a day. Are they who are receiving? 
Do you see the balance? It says now, his blood shall be upon him, but he that taketh warning shall deliver his soul. And verse 6. But if the watchman, God speaking to me now, but if the watchman see the sword come, and blow not the trumpet, and the people be not warned, if the sword come, and take any person from among them, he is taken away in his iniquity. But his blood will I require this text is why a lot of pastors are going to be lost. Let me do it again. This text right here is why a lot of pastors are going to be lost. I want you to see something in the text. Watch this. And you take any person from among them, the person who is taken is taken away in his iniquity. What does that mean? Is that person lost or saved? But what still happens to the watchman? But his blood requires him. So you think people can come on the judgment day and say, Why pastor never preach it to me? God, you will never tell me. You shall be taken away in your iniquity. You are lost. But still, God is just. So what is he going to do to those watchmen? He is going to throw the condemnation as well on them. This text is why a lot of preachers, pastors, are going to be lost. What is our sermon title? The conditions were right, even though the results were delayed. We must reflect the same. Do not turn a blind eye. Cannot fit. Cannot fit. Let's do it again. The conditions were right, even though the results were delayed. We must reflect the same. Do not turn a blind eye. Cannot fit. When a person uses the term, do not turn a blind eye. What do they mean? You know, you see it, you understand, you deliberately ignore. You are willfully ignorant. And serious judgment will fall on those people. Let's go back a little in time. In Matthew 24 that I just read to you, in answer to the question of his disciples concerning the sign of his coming and of the end of the world, Christ had pointed out, church, he had pointed out some of the most important events in the history of the world and of the church from the first to his second advent. Namely, let's list them now, the destruction of Jerusalem. Did this happen before the 1800s? Yes. AD 70, the destruction of Jerusalem, the great tribulation of the church. Did this happen before the 1800s? Yes, it did. It happened as with the apostles and it happened in the dark ages and ended 1798. Jesus spoke about it, the great tribulation of the church under the pagan and papal persecutor. Rome, pagan and papal. Pagan with the apostles, Papal in the dark ages. It happened. Not only that, those are two signs. Sign number three, the darkening of the sun and the moon. When did this happen, church? 1733. When did this happen? 1733. The darkening of the sun and the moon. And then, what happened after that? The falling of the stars. When did this happen? Wait, I think, did I get something wrong? 17. 1755. Mm -hmm. Good. And then 1833. At the falling of the star. Church, listen to me now. These things Jesus had spoken about and they had taken place in the exact order. After this, he spoke of his coming in his kingdom. You can go and read Matthew 24. And if you're following it chronologically, you why is it Jesus is not here yet? I am saying to you, if you go and read Matthew 24, at 
and read it like a storybook. Chapter 1 comes before chapter 2. Chapter 2 comes before chapter 3. And the events are set as they would seem in chronological order. I can tick them off and tick them off. Then his coming should be here. Why is it that Jesus has not yet come? After this, he spoke of his coming in his kingdom and related the parable describing the two classes of servants down in the ending of Matthew chapter 24 that I read to you this morning, who are looking for his appearing. Not three who, not four, not five, not ten, only two. It rolls into chapter 25 and opens with the word, then shall the kingdom of heaven be lightened unto virgins. Here is brought to view the church living in the last days. This message I bring to you today, Matthew 24 at the end and Matthew 25 will run with God's church all the way to the close of probation, which means before now and today and henceforward when Jesus steps out of the most holy place in Revelation chapter 22, the message at the end of Matthew chapter 24 and all now. I weep for Israel, modern Israel. I weep for the people and the masses. You know why? Because we read so much. We can quote so much, but we cannot apply when it's happening. We don't understand when we are living in that very time. Jesus had a problem when he came to Jerusalem. The people were taught, their minds were poisoned by the leaders for so long that they Don't 
said that it was not time for fig to bear fruit. Let me tell you the nature of a fig tree. Jesus didn't curse the fig tree just because it merely didn't bear fruit at that time. This is the nature of a fig tree. The fruit comes before the leaves. And so anytime you see a fig tree that's fully um, covered with leaves from the lowest branch to the highest, it is clear that it must have fruit. Whether it is time for fruit or not. Because the fruit comes before the leaves. And so when Jesus came upon this fig tree and he found no fruit, but it was a lush with leaves, he cursed that fig tree. Why? Because it was a pretender. Why? Because it didn't live to its nature. Are you a Christian? Are you just covered with leaves? Are you a Christian? You know this what the Bible says? You ought to be a fruit of love. Joy, patience, happiness, and yours. Are you a Christian? Or are you just covered with leaves? You see, well, that's just leaves. You, your skirt reaches your ankle. That's good, but that's just leaves. And, and a tree with lush leaves looks good. This is why Jesus cursed the fig tree. Because it was a pretense. Because it didn't operate as the nature of a fig tree should. You say you're a Christian, there are certain things that you're supposed to bear. Certain things that you are supposed to do. Sure, the conditions in the 1800s was right. And Jesus, there's nothing else that could have said otherwise for those who were studying that he is about. We want to have the same character. Let me read on a little about their characters. They were steadfast, though they were disappointed. Some had moved from impulse. The fears had been excited by the solemn message. They were unwise. They were in the other group. But they had depended upon the faith of their brethren. And you believe that, but you're murmuring now 
Bible because you got little, then check yourself. Because you already know what you're going to do when all is gone. Because if you're murmuring with little, then when all is cut off, then you won't get cut off. Cut off from what society? No, from God. But you won't do that easy and sell your soul for a pot of stew, lentil stew. I want us today to pause and think about what I'm saying. Their fears have been excited. We talk about an online group. Their fears have been excited by the solemn message. So what's going to happen when you listen to the country living series? Jesus is coming again. And you, you sold your house. After life was good and merry. Huh? You, 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 you know, the cities are so convenient. I look at these things and examine my own self. You in Port Moore and everything is there. Five minutes and everything. You go to the gym, you go to the ATM, the supermarket, then the water store, everything, and then you just go home and it's just convenient. Why do you walk the wall down and put you on your phone and you come back, you scratch, you smile, you say, Lord, it's a place like, you see, character. You need to check yourself. If you're, if, why are you doing what you're doing? And we should go in the country. Are you convicted? Because there's always a delay. You find a move, find a in the country home, and you hear one year pass. Oh, Jesus, don't reach it. You hear two here in the side, and no message. And God just smiles and says, Yes, we did not. Eating out. Main thing for country living is character. What is it? Character development. And do you think that happens overnight? You want to answer that question? Just look at your character. How long you've been fighting with it? How long you're fighting with it? You fought with it in building the church. You're fighting with it in present truth. You're fighting with it this morning. Sit 
down as an individual. We're not going to be saved like this. We are saved as an individual. Sit down and measure your experience and your own fate. That if this place gets empty and there are five, you're in the five. We are nearing the end. The time is about to be rubbed out. Yes, it's okay to come here and get acquainted with people and brethren. But in the end, when the questions come and the test of your faith, know where you stand. Not this is the crowd. Conditions were right, church. Even though the results were delayed, and we must reflect the same. Do not turn a blind eye to your experience. Do not turn a blind eye to the signs of the time, which are sickening and ever increasing. Do not turn a blind eye to the evidences that God has given. They are clear. God already told you, I read it this morning, you don't know the hour. You don't know the hour. Time goes quickly. A thousand years in his sight is like a day. You know, when I was younger, you know when you're a young boy? 10 and you know, level coming up in your teenage years? You and you would do anything. You flip off a tree, you you bounce, you clap, you just run in. You can't stop the energy. You, you just enjoy, you drop down, you brush off the little robot. old people. And they said, boy, time run quick. Eh? And then he said, by time quick, the third forty. And he said, old people, they, they, they want company in your old boat. But until you get there, you going to stand up and say, how on earth did I reach you? Then you don't fight the fight that you should fight. And when you don't fight the fight that you should fight, 
satisfied with the flickering light of good emotions without a thorough understanding of the truth or a genuine work of grace in the heart. I'm going to read that slow again. These are those who fed amongst the unwise virgin. I want to read that slow and I want you to listen. Watch this. Their fears have been excited by the solid message. By the what? But they had depended upon the faith of who? Their brethren. Watch this now. Satisfied. They, the people who fell out, they were satisfied with the flickering light. So not a full light. Not a strong light. Just a flickering light of good emotions. Good what? Emotions come. Emotions go. It is changing. They were satisfied. Can I satisfied with that? With flickering emotions uh, without a furrow. They didn't have one. What did they didn't have? Without a what? A furrow. A know-how. Study for yourself. Read every verse. Understand every paragraph. Without a furrow understanding of the truth. Or a genuine. I like the word. Or what? A genuine word of grace in the heart. Without that, that's how you're going to fall in the unwise. That's how you're going to fall in the evil servant. Why are there those who are praying for the delay to cut down? There are those who want the delay to continue. Did we read about them today? Yeah, Matthew 24. You didn't remember? What did the evil servant say? My Lord delayed his coming. And so, because the Lord delayed his coming, what did the evil servant go and do? Eat and drink with the who? With the who? The drunken. That's those who are in the world. Why would you pray, want, speak for the delay to continue? Because you have degrees to get. You don't understand that? You still have a house to build. We don't talk about country house now, we don't. Church, it's not easy to be detached from this world. It's not easy to be detached from this world. When you see everybody living and doing certain things that you're used to, it's not easy to be detached from this world. Self has to die. You think there was no struggle? You know, from I was young, I was constant. To what do you mean? Children change, you know that, right? At five, you say, what do you want to be? Fireman. At six, doctor. At seven, mechanic. At eight, uh, 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 yeah, they did. But I was different. One thing, never shift. Scientist or doctor. To have reached that lifelong goal, what God says, take a detour, yeah. you think there's no struggle. There is a fight within that one has to win by on his knee and by a relationship with God. And let me tell you something. <laughs> it's easy to leave Israel alone. That's right. You never got that. Yeah. It's easy to leave Israel alone. It's hard to stay with them. You don't understand? Every trouble. Every problem that they can bring, everything that they can carry and allow to come against you, they'll do it. Yes. The love that Moses had, I'm still learning to get. It's the love only like Christ. To die and be sacrificed by the very people and still say, forgive them. Moses had it. Stephen had it. All reached it. Who will be saved? We have to reach it. It 
is a struggle and a fight. But you only lose when you stop fighting. You only lose when you stop kicking. Church, we are at the end of it all. And we have to make a decision which group we fall in. These church had gone forth to meet the Lord, full of hope in the prospect of immediate reward. What did they want? But they were not prepared for a delay. And disappointment, when the trials came, their faith failed and their lights burned in. Their lights did what? Church, the word did not stand in the wisdom. I want to read, I want you to listen, don't get distracted. Listen this part. The word did not stand in the wisdom and learning of men, but in the power of God. Statements like those I hold on to. You know why? With human eye, you cannot see. Let me read it again. It says, the word did not stand in the wisdom and learning of men, but in the power of God. Let me tell you what's my greatest encouragement. God is going to finish this work. God is going to finish this work. Two things. Number one, I don't know where you'll be when we reach the finish of the work. I pray to God that every face I'm looking at here, you will stand here unless you're dead. And if you're dead, I pray you die in Christ. That's number one, but number two, I will strive with all my being to reach that place, to stand in God's army. Here's what I can tell you, there'll be no mistake. What, what do you mean, Pastor? I don't understand. There'll be no mistake. You remember Gideon's army? There was not enough people in the army. You remember that? Yeah. And what did God do? I don't understand how God works. Don't worry about the rain. Rain is doing what it should do, it falls. Yeah. Listen to me, church. Listen to me this morning. We don't understand how God works, but we can trust Him. Yeah. You know how I know you can trust Him? Sit down and look at your life. Sit down and remember the things you went through. And then, let me ask you a question. Can you trust him? Yes. Now, can you see tomorrow? No. But can you trust him? Yes. Does he do everything for his benefit or for your good? For our good. Now, is it that everything he does is always sweet?
but it's coming. There will always be disappointment, but it's for your good. Church, the work did not stand in the wisdom and learning of men, but in the power of God. It was not, I want you to listen to this. Listen, listen. It was not the most talented, not the most what? But the most humble and devoted. Who were the wise? The most what? Humble and devoted. And look what the reading did. It went on to tell you the occupation. Watch this. Who were the first to hear and obey the call? Who was the first to hear and obey the call? Not the most talented, but the most what? The humble and devoted. Listen to the first occupation. Farmers. Who heard the call, the clarion call? It was not the talented. So you're not going to see doctors in this list. You're not going to see um, politicians. No, no. The first one that listed is what? Farmers. By the way, that should include all of us. Because all of us should be headed to the... And once you head to the country, all of us, you should be what? You know, some of you will go to the country and pay somebody a little money to farm up the land and look at it nice and eat the food. That's not good. Farm to You go and help and learn. That's what some of you go in the country to do. You go, in, go and walk a little common man on there and say, come on, what? come on, come on, work. He has a thousand dollars. And they work on fine. And you get them and they sit down and say, ah, look at it. It's going and then you just speak. No.
in the cause were among the last to join in this movement. Watch what he's going to do. The churches in general, they closed their doors against this message. And a large company of those who received it withdrew from their connection. What, what did a large company do? They couldn't continue with those people. They did what? They withdrew from their connection. In the providence of God, this proclamation united with the second advent or second angel's message. What is the second angel's message? So watch, 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 watch this. Just at the time when the conditions were right and the second coming of God was running through the land and people were preaching it and a movement towards the second coming was happening, what message was now the right message to join in that? The second angel's message. What did it say? Come out of her, my people. Why? Because that message has to be perfected before Jesus comes. Because there are still some of his people here and there and he has to pull them. John 10, they will become what for? One. Church, we are privileged to be alive today. And if we live long enough, we're about to see something we have never seen before. In the providence of God, this proclamation united with the second angel's message and gave power to that work. That's Jesus, page 402, paragraph 1. Carefully, church, carefully and solemnly, those who received the message came up to the time when they hoped to meet their Lord. Now remember what I said, the conditions were right even though the results were delayed. We must reflect the same. You want to show you what we must reflect? Listen what they did. Every morning, what they did? Every morning, they felt that it was their first duty to secure the evidence of their acceptance with God. What did the people do at the time? Every morning. What was the first thing they did? They made sure they secured their, their acceptance with God. They did it what? Every morning. Though Christ never came then, he's coming now, we must reflect the same every morning. Their first duty was to make sure they were accepted with God. Their hearts were closely muted and they prayed much with and for one another. We have to reflect the same. Those who will be saved, when he breaks the cloud that he's going to take, they're going to be doing this 2022 and beyond. Every morning, they'll be praying with hearts muted and praying for one another. Every morning. They often met together. Listen, listen. They often met together in secluded places. Where? No distraction. They often met in secluded places to commune with God and the voice of intercession ascended to heaven from the fields and groves. Because that's where you would find secluded places. We have to reflect the same thing. Is Jesus coming again? Imminently. He's coming? Yes. So what should we be doing? That same thing. Every morning, secure our souls with God. Mute our hearts and pray one for another. Meeting in secluded places and the cries of intercession were going up. Every morning, every day, the assurance of the Savior's approval was more necessary to them than their daily food. What does that sound like? Fasting and prayer. What was more necessary to them than their daily food? The assurance of the Savior's approval was more necessary to them than their daily food. We have to reflect the same. Right. That's the wise virgin. That's the good servant. That's the group that's going to glory. Church. Listen to this line. I want you to hear this. 
and if a cloud darkened their minds, listen what they did. If a dark cloud came on their minds, and if a cloud darkened their minds, they did not rest until it was swept away. Amen. You have to reflect the same. If a dark cloud came on their mind, they would struggle and fight and battle and pray and fast. They would not rest until that dark cloud was swept. They wouldn't sleep. This is the condition they were in. As they understood and they thought at the time that the imminent return of Jesus was about to break the atmosphere. So you're saying he's about to come again? Do you reflect the same? Don't answer me, just think about it. Do you reflect the same? As they felt the witness of pardoning grace, they longed to behold him whom their soul loved. Do you see how this fruit works? Are you like that? Do you love Jesus? Then if you do, you should be reflecting the same. The early sincere believers had given up all for Christ. They did not give up all for Christ. They had, as they believed, given their last warning to the world. Do you know how Seventh-day Adventist was formed? You can't imagine these people sold everything, gave it up and looking for Jesus, and, and people were mocking them, <laughs> They're mocking them and they're cheering them and then no Jesus came. What do you think happened to the mothers? They got shot and said, you fool. They had to bear that. And you know how Seventh-day Adventists came about? So who bore through that shame. That's how Seventh-day Adventists came. Because many who put fear fell away. But the little group that maintained and held through, that's how Seventh-day Adventists came to be. They are here. We are standing on their shoulders. And what are we doing now? They sold everything. They gave up everything. Expecting to be received into the society of Jesus. To share in his presence as never before. They had, as they believed, given their last one into the world. And expected soon to be received into the society of their divine master. And the heavenly angels, they had to a great extent. They had to a great extent withdrawn from the society of those who did not receive the message. What did they do? So before Jesus comes, is there a withdrawal process? How are you going to get your soul together if you don't withdraw from everything that would prevent that? Whether it's an institution, a family, a home, you have to pull away. You know what these people wanted? They wanted a consistent, constant, focused connection to heaven. No disturbance right to until Jesus comes. And they did everything to maintain that. Leave family, left job, withdraw from society, withdraw from friends, withdraw from institution and church. So you think you're going to do something different today? You have to reflect the same. Do not turn a blind eye today. The signs are clear. We understand things they did not understand. We now know the free angel's message, know why they made the mistake. And we should be sure that any other generation that is imminent return is even at the door. But I'm asking a question this morning. Do you reflect the same? Every morning, make sure you're clear with God. Do you reflect the same? Pray for yourself with a silent heart and others, putting away into secluded areas and allowing the, the voices of intercession to ascend to heaven. Do Put it to you, if we are not reflecting this, we do not believe that Christ's coming is even. We have turned a blind eye to the coming of Christ. And where will we fall? In the evil servant, Matthew 24. Where will we fall? In the unwise virgin. And let me make it clear, your blood will 
not be on my shoulder. Because as a watchman, I given the power of God, it will now be on your shoulder that you have heard the watchman and you did not give me. Church, let's get to the end. With intense desire, they had prayed. Listen what they prayed. Come, Lord Jesus, and come quickly. But he had not come. And now to take up again the heavy burden of life's tears and perplexity and to endure the taunts and snares of a scoffing world was a terrible trial of faith and patience. You can imagine the people laughing at you. They never got that chance land long, long with Noah. Why? Did they mock him? Yeah. Did Noah have to bear it? Yeah. How long did Noah preach? A hundred years. No, after you preach for long. You know, say no, no, we're not only past 120 years. But Noah's time was different. But after you preach for 120 years, I'm not saying going now. You know, expect something like it to rain start now. Days. You know there are a lot of hours in one day. You know now we could hear them out there. Hey no, no rain sitting or dry weather. Come and start the party with us now. Do you think all these people would be so bold to carry their jerk pan, to carry their party and their sound system? I'm telling you how sin works and how sinful people work. Do you know? Was 
of sin. What about how, how do you feel in present truth, church? Mm. You feel like an option? No. I tell people I am a full shirt. Yes. Full. Yes. Amen. So you option, I say no. I'm not off or half. I'm full. Yes. John 15 says that he is the vine yes. and we are the branches. This is by the church. Yes. How do you feel now? Your faith is being tested? Every day somebody whispers in your ears, family, friends, past members. Hmm. They said, give up this nonsense and say the Advent movement was of sin. But God's word is here and I'm coming down to close. If any man Draw back. If any man, I've seen some who drew back. If any man, I'm not saying people can come back, you know. People can come back in certain positions. Because once people do certain things, you understand weaknesses and where they are. If any man, you want to hear what God says about them? Thank you. 
cannot fail. Church, let's get to the slides. All right, it says now the Catholic agencies say Inflation Reduction Act. You know about that act? Yeah. That was passed this week. If you've read that act, yeah. you've read the fine print, Sunday law. Yeah. You've read the fine print, go and on, on read it now. It's on Google. Go and read it now. The, the Inflation Reduction Act. Go and read the fine print, Sunday law. Hmm. Yeah. And, and, and how could they bring in such an act? Because of the inflation. So what you do, you create a crisis and give the solution. What is this called? A Galian dialectic. All right? Catholic agencies say inflation reduction act on its way to Biden's desk. This week it was passed. Addresses long-standing goal. Oh yeah, what's their long-standing goal? Read here. Speaker of the House, Nancy Pelosi said, they represent value. Uh -huh. Values exposed by coal prices. When he said earlier this summer, our planet has reached a breaking point. You see, all of these world leaders, they're referencing who? Coal prices. You see, in the fight against climate crisis, I told it, somebody disagreed, and the person keeps texting me and saying, change that, I say it long enough. They say this climate thing has nothing to do with the Sunday law. I said, okay. Soon, no? Climate crisis is not the Sunday law. Let's do it again. The climate crisis is not the Sunday law. But it is the Trojan horse. Remember that Greek mythology story? When they made that big horse and packed it with soldiers? Because they worshipped that God. And when they pulled it into the city in the night, the soldiers came out. It's called a Trojan horse. It's not the real thing, huh? But it carries in or paves the way for the real Macoy. So, I say it again. The, the, the climate change is the Trojan horse for the national Sunday law. All right? So here it is. Our planet has reached a breaking point in the fight against climate crisis. We are just delighted that the United States is back in the game. Why, why are they saying they're back in the game? Come, come. I want to bring you a bit with it. Because Trump gave them a lot of trouble for the four years. You know Trump. You can't just come and just attach a string. And, no, the man is a, the man is a um, narcissist. The man don't do him one thing. And you were telling him to shut down the coal mine. The man is a businessman. So it never works. And let me tell you down here. You got more time. We don't care about politics. But by him going in office for that four years. Seven days, Dennis. You got more time. I know his personality was off. But it's only him. You got more time. Now come by him. She you knows your problem, know people's problem. They don't know when the snake is in the grass. They can take certain strong personality. So that everyone is more calm, more loving. I'm gonna make it too rough. It's too rough, my boo. Give us another that's calm. You don't know. It's better you get it face to face and the truth being told to you plain and deal with that and lick your wounds. But the soft night, they are not the ones who will tell you. They, they, they smooth you and stab you in the back. Watch it. Now comes by the Catholic. How much years is left? Two more years. Watch. 2023. 2024. Watch. Watch. Watch what's going to happen. So she says, Nancy Pelosi said, we are delighted that the United States is back in the game. What game? In parentheses, to address climate change internationally and nationally. And we know it's going to happen. Why? Why? America is the? They are the land islands. Revelation 13. They have to lead the way. I am grateful for the many substantial climate provisions that bring the United States closer to honoring its emissions reduction goals under the Paris Agreement. You remember the Paris Agreement? You remember when they were trying to implement it right away? What did it cause in Paris? 
yellow vest or what? You don't remember? Don't forget these days. Just a few years back, the riots. You remember the riots all across Paris? And this is the same thing now, like the Paris Agreement, it's going to happen. Which, 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 which it said, which Pope Francis has strongly encouraged us to meet. The Archbishop said. You don't see what's happening? What do I mean when I say cannot fit? The world that we're now living in, true Seventh-day Adventists will not be able to fit in it. That's why we're going to get cut off. Go forward. And remember this, in Review and Arrow, this is now why she's a prophetess. Roman Catholic principles, did you hear the principles a while ago? Will be taken under what? Under the care and protection of the, the state. In the church, this national apostasy will speedily be followed by what? National. Let's go forward. Watch what's happening now. Drought. Drought. Drought in England could carry on into New And underneath that veneer, the sun the law will come. It says now, a drought has been declared for parts of England following the dry summer for 50 years. Watch this dog. Oh, watch this. Watch, watch how this is an old plan. Read this, read this part of it. World's top climate scientists. Not 
under new um, false views now. According to the DIACC Digital ID, you will enable Canadians to participate in the global digital economy. So if you're not in it, you can't fit in. Yeah. The Canadian Bankers Association has openly stated that Canada's bank under the leadership of WIC, who is that? World Economic should do more to adopt an ID, digital ID regime. Conservative Party of Canada, MP and leadership candidate Leslie Lewis called into question to use government's connections with World Economic Forum. Remember I showed you already, um, Carl Schwab spoke about some of the leaders who were trained on that system. And one of them was who? All right. And blasted the WEF pilot project, the known traveler digital identity, of which Canada and the Netherlands are partners. She called it nothing more than a social credit system. That's what's coming. We won't be able to fit in. Privacy advocates and others, including former Conservative MP Derek Sloan, are concerned that any sort of digital ID could lead to a China style or panda style. Panda. No? Panda, panda. A panda style social credit system. And, and what did the Catholics say? Which country best reflects our common good system? Panda country, all right? It says here, the dangers that this new program poses to upholding civil liberties and privacy rights and the clear opportunities for abuse of governmental authority, it presents in terms of surveillance and compelled behavior, using access to basic resources as a tool of coercion are ominous. You remember the truckers in Canada? You remember? You remember they protested? You remember they had a truck, truckers protest? You want to see what they did to the truckers? They, they point toward progression.
they can exclude marginalized groups. That's for now. For now. But come. And by the way, we are going to be marginalized. Listen. Let's go again. Let's go. Alright, now you press it. Okay. Let's be blunt. The so called trusted regional identity bill represents a watershed moment in Australian history. We stand at the divide between a free personal enterprise future and a digital. It's not finished. Gonna play it, let's try. Alright, that video was shown in that's in Australia. And the gentleman was gonna speak on the fact of what the digital ID system is about, what we in. Let's be blunt. The so-called trusted digital identity bill represents a watershed moment in Australian history. We stand at the divide between a free personal enterprise future and a digital surveillance age. Nothing is done to stop this bill. Government will sit in the middle of every interaction Australians have with each other and with the world. And it achieves this in the same way China does, by creating a digital identity that forms a central part of a person's life. You can call it a license to live. What began with COVID contact tracing, vaccine passports and QR check-ins will soon be formalised by an inescapable digital identity. It signals the complete end of consumer privacy, the end of citizen anonymity, and the beginning of a big brother digital age that treats the people of Australia as products rather than free human beings. The government intends to build a complete digital record of every Australian to be shared and used. Our medical history, our shopping preferences, who we associate with, whether our choices are really so-called green, social security, veteran services, travel records, website viewing, employment status, and social media comments. Everything will go on the record and be available to any large corporation that can pay for access. All of this orchestrated by a federal liberal nationals government who proudly but distortingly call it a human-centric digital identity. So, do you get it? How did we reach here by C19? When C19 came in, they started to talk about QR codes, this, that, that. And they slipped it in society under the crisis. And now from that, they're going straight into a digital economy. See how it works? So it's the Hegelian dialectic. Create a problem and give the solution. That's how it happens. And now they will be in everything in your life. When you got married, who you married to, what you bought yesterday, what, what you're eating, they will be in it. So the only way to survive this is how? Because your country living has to be off the grid. Alright? Let's try and get to the end as we close up. It says in the last great conflict of a controversy with Satan, those who are loyal, key word is what? Loyal to God will see what? Every earth the support cut off. Red words, they will be forbidden to buy or sell. That's how it's going to happen. It will finally be decreed that they shall be put to death. And many people, when they read these things, they don't believe. Even with these evidences, they still don't believe. And they're going to believe. You want to tell you when they're going to believe? When they are about to cut the card for the um, guillotine. You know what's a guillotine? Yeah. Chop their head off. Too late. And it's all across the world. I talk about America, I talk about the UK. Which country is this? Pakistan digital ID card keep millions locked out. It's going everywhere. Where, where is that? That's Africa. Uganda sued over digital ID system that excludes millions. The people are fighting. While many of our rulers are active agents of Satan, God also has his agents among the leading men of the nation. The enemy moves upon his servants to propose measures that will greatly impede the work of God. Red words. But state men who fear the Lord are influenced by only agents to oppose such proposition with unanswerable arguments. Thus a few men will hold in check a powerful current of influence. 
like the man we just watched, we have to pray for those people. There are people in the government who don't know nothing that we know. But just the things they are seeing, they are saying, something all right. And some of them will stand up. And some of them are going to be saved. And some of them are going to stand for God's people. That's what's going to happen. All right? We are living in the what? Time of the, the condition of things in the world show that. Troublous times are right upon us. The daily papers are full of indication of terrible conflict. Church exclusive Biden's emergency board calls for rail, railroad wage hikes to resolve. You know railroad? Railroad. That's the trade. You know what trains do? You think it's only people that carry? They carry, they carry cargo. So what's going to happen when they strike? Down here, railroads coming when the controlling power of the what? Labor union will be very oppressive. It's happening. The unions are doing this. Let's take in a few short videos. Let's try. Read the words. So the people are upset, angry, mad. How long they have not gotten an increase? Three years. That's true. What period? C19. But have there been increase in, in profits? Yes. The people are going to riot when they ever walk off this work. Let's let's listen to this news. Pope bashes tech giants for exploiting hate speech, booming, and fake. This 
was years, a year ago, but all of it is coming from Pope Francis. So they're acting now. There it is. Pope Francis said these new preachers can re be recognized by their he said this a year ago, which contrasts with preaching the gospel that makes us free, makes us joyful. Pope Francis said that is exactly the way the evil one seeks to divide Christian communities today. All right? And everything is coming from these things now. You see the gatekeepers locking down? And listen, listen, church. World Economic Forum calls for merging of human. You say the way censorship is done these days is that each internet platform, such as Twitter, has its own moderation team and a decision making engine. Red words. So, for example, user John Smith 12345 may have a Twitter account and not narrowly abide by Twitter rules, but at the same time have a Getter account where he would publish anti vaccine messages. So they're saying the people are having more than one account. So they want to just flood everywhere. Shut them down. Blue words, that is no longer acceptable to the World Economic Forum because they want to silence what? People and ideas, not individual messages or accounts. They want to shut you down for good. And they're coming. By uniquely combining the power of innovative technology, off-platform, intelligence collection, and the prowess of subject matter experts who understand how, how, how threat actors operate. Blue words, in this way, says the, the World Economic Forum, in this way, trust and safety teams can stop threats rising online before they reach users. We're not going to fit. We cannot fit. For example, in addition to looking at my Twitter profile, World Economic Forum proposed AI would also look at my data profile, and then it would make an intelligent decision, robots that they program, to remove me from the internet at once. That's shutting you down. Blue words. They also want to look for ideas and not only individuals, but nevertheless, the search for wrong, wrong thing becomes globalized. So once they shut down me, for example, I can't get on nowhere. I can't go to the beach or any other thing to get on. That's what they're working on. Total close down. We're not going to be able to fit. This sounds like an insane conspiracy theory from hell. It says the World Economic Forum collecting information on everyone everywhere, blue words, that sees everything and can identify individual people and ideas beyond any given platform. Red word, listen to this, listen to this. You will have no voice and you will be happy. Me? Who are they talking about? That's what they were in 2030. You will own nothing, not even your voice, and you will love it. Who are they talking about? Oh no. Oh no. Oh no, only silence is dead. Of course, this AI content moderation slots straight into the AI social credit score system. Social what? You know how Americans operate? By what? Social credit. So it's going to trouble that. You can't buy it and you can't sell it. And it says here, then all kinds of punishment will be meted out from slash UBI credits to bug food rationing to an early granting of the freedom to be euthanized. Do not comply. We cannot fit. We cannot fit in this world. The article has been widely criticized on a conservative news site. A report for the Daily Caller pointed out that social media companies are known to target conservative content online. Watch this now. This is what they did after that. This is what they did after that. Readers, please be aware that this article has been shared on Websites that routinely misrepresent content and spread misinformation. This is what World Economic Forum said. Number one, the content of this article is the opinion of the author, not the word economic. Those who know, know what's happening here. No, nah, no, nah, they lie. They're just trying to push it off because people are rushing on it. And number two, please read the piece for yourself. The forum is committed to publishing a wide array of voices. Uh, uh, uh. They're tricky. They got caught. They got caught. Let's go forward. We're closing up. Pope Francis, those who insist on keeping the truth over preaching the gospel have always written the truth, the church. What am I So you separate the gospel from the truth? Babylon! Confusion. Uh, uh. Well, you are concerned about Pope Francis as 
amongst your own. When you try to keep the truth, you're not allowed to preach the gospel. So, preacher. Babylon is in. Yes. Spread everywhere.
people will abuse them. You lose your soul. They call you every hour and any time. Don't call me on Friday. I need time. Is that fair? Yes. So last night, I heard my phone ring. I said, but who? And it was a WhatsApp call. I said, but who could be calling me now? I walked over to the phone and looked at it. And I saw a number that wasn't saved. And so I walked away. And he called again. So I took it off the charger and I sent the message via text. And I said, no, these are not right hours to be calling. You can send the email and the message. I might respond. And the person sent the email. And then I scrolled up in the, because there was history in conversation. And I scrolled up and I said, oh, it's this sister. It's one of her own sisters who was baptized recently, which she's not here now, but I know of a fact that her daughter had a stroke. And then she told me that she came out of the hospital, she's doing physiotherapy, and when I pressed the voice note, she was just crying out of control, oh, this daughter is now dead. She just died about five minutes, and she was calling me, because she just spoke to her, and she was there in the house, and then all of a sudden, her eyes just rolled back. And she's dead. I figure she probably got another major stroke right there. 42 years old. This is the, the suddenness of how life can go. Quickly, quickly. Let's keep our sister in prayer, the family. But that's how quickly it can go. <laughs> I'm so, I'm so sensitive to death. You know, sometimes when Jamaica call everything yes. Feel things and yes, yes, yes. But that's not necessarily always the case. But if you've ever been there, you just feel like something stick your heart and you wonder what's happening. <laughs> Those things happen, I start talking to God. So what's happening? You don't know. You exercise, you eat well, but you don't know within this body and its arteries and its veins and its vessels. But that's how sudden it can go. So when I say to you, while I'm speaking of the coming of the Lord, in a few short years, I say this to you, will you see the sunset of the day? You think it's impossible that you might not see it? How long do you think it takes to die? When I answer that. I'm not talking about your progression to death. I'm talking about just that last breath. How long? How long do you think it takes? Seconds, milliseconds. And so the question right now is are you ready now? Are you ready now? You know, sometimes I think about it. I'm closing, I'm gonna pray. Sometimes I think about it and I reflect on myself in the past, moments of anger and blowing out, and I say, what if in that moment you're dead? And I say, I think we need to think about these things before we allow ourselves to get lost in the moment. Because in that moment, we can die. That's right. It is the mercy, what's the text say now? It is the mercy that we are not consumed. But what does Ecclesiastic 8 verse 11 say? Because sentence against an evil work is not done quickly. The children of men are set in their ways to do Where is your soul today? This is a personal appeal. Where is your soul today? Some of us, when I pray and I close and I get off the stage, the sermon done for you. You go on, eat, and you talk about something. You, that's how quick some of you forget. You can't be saved like that. It ought to still be rolling in your head. 
and you're contemplating your discussion. You can't be saved like that if you are so quick to forget. So where is your soul now? Where is your soul now? We sung that song before, and we sung it before. Why well, it's such a powerful song? And it really fits again. Are you ready? That's the key. That's the cue. Are you ready? For Jesus to come. Listen to these words. Are you faithful in our Lord? Now, if you want to come, you can come now. If you want to come, you can come. Have you fought a good fight? Because I'm going to pray. Have you stood? But contemplate, church. And if there's a strong conviction to walk, then probably you should walk. Whether you're at the back or in the middle. But you might not get another chance like this. Are you ready to Are you those here contemplating back this? My workers are here. So Jackson is here. Sister Maury is here. My workers are here. You're under strong conviction to come, then probably you should come. Are you ready?
no more playing around. Let me clear all record now by calling on the righteous robe of Jesus, your son, like Joshua the High Priest, take our robe. Take our robe. And cover us with the robe of Jesus. Because our own righteousness is like filthy rags. Save us, Lord. For we cannot save ourselves. Your people are before you. Those in Montego Bay are before you. Those watching locally are before you. Those who will watch. Those who will hear are before you. Oh God, save us, Lord, I pray. I leave your church into your care. Bless the meal that we will have physically, Lord. May be nutrition to our body. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.